from a secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I think that you just don't really make our world a better place. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, we'll be joined in this hour by Skylar Stone. He'll be uh, coming to these microphones, and you'll be able to talk to him personally. Coming up in the meantime, it's you and me with wide open telephones. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. All you have to do is call us here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Joe on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay, Joe. Man, Tom, I, just called, I heard your guest earlier today, and he was talking, or just a little while ago, and he was talking about uh, that he's over there for the Super Bowl to, watch, to witness uh, history. And history was made when they got caught cheating, you know what I mean? Just like very, if they if, if they get something if they get something on that ball if they get something to Tom Brady and the and the Patriots for doing that stuff they might as well take that that asteroid thing they get on on uh, Barry Bonds' ball you know because it's the same thing you know what I mean that's what's gonna that's what's gonna make Barry Bonds' case about this you know what I mean you know if you oh wait it, wait well, first of all what do does football have to do with baseball. Oh, man, cheater's a cheater, right? Well, but the he's point is that, 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 that football and baseball have different management, different commissioners. They're not related in any way. The coach is the first one, right? And the coach got caught cheating. And just like just like you're saying, you're right, Tom. Yeah, the coach got caught cheating. So did the player. Like you said, baseball's different. They got one person got to, t- uh, to accommodate for their one person for their own actions. A coach has got to accommodate for... Uh, for all their actions, you know, he's the one that got caught. He knew he was, was reading plays. That's the bottom line. And he was oh, penalized. He was he was punished. Oh, but how how, how punished is he going to be? Unless the Giants don't win, the, unless the Giants lose tomorrow, unless the Giants win tomorrow, he will not be punished. And I'm, I'm calling over here from the over here from the DIC uh, uh, school district. They just took, they just took two championships away from Bass from uh, from uh, Oak Cliff. For basketballs over here, you know, for basketball, for uh, no, we're not talking players. about high school sports here. We're talking about the major leagues here. But it's the same thing that that leads to, you know, when it when you get starts with the kids, you know what I mean. Once you get large, just like Barry Bonds, like everybody says, once you learn how to cheat, and do steroids, you can do that too. Once you go as to football, you go and learn cheat. If you can learn that football and cheat at one person and make a whole team win, you're better than that one person that could cheat by himself. You know what I mean? All right. He took a breath, and I'm taking it. <laughs> Did you ever hear of a period? Oh, baby. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Tony on the Tom Lanka Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. First time, long time. Thank you. All right. I, uh, I'd like a little bit of elaboration on your negative labeling of Ron Paul. Honestly, I think he's the most pointed, concise, and honest candidate we've had in the God well, that that never is. wins, as you know. Well, no, it won't, but it can gain support, and which is... No, he, it won't. Well, because the media is going to shaft him, because the media is controlled by the Council on Foreign Relations, as is every other Oh, candidate. stop it. See, you're another one of those conspiracy theorists, please. No, it's, no, it's no theory. There's oh, no theory. The yeah, it's a theory. It's a theory. It's a theory. It's come public. It's a theory, and you see again, you are you are the reason Ron Paul won't win because crackpots like you are the people who follow crackpots like him. Because of why? Because he, he's a crackpot. Because he he's a crackpot, and you're a crackpot. Yes, 
He wants to cut the four hundred billion dollars spending overseas because he wants to create. I don't care. I don't care about any of this stuff. You know. You know what? The issues don't matter when it gets right down to it. If people, that's why. By the way, that's why Howard Dean. That's why Howard Dean got eliminated permanently because of thirty seconds of shrieking at the top of his lungs. That was it. He was perceived to be a crackpot. Didn't matter. Does anybody know what his position on any issue was at this point? No. Nobody cares. If you are perceived to be a if you are perceived to be a crackpot, you will not win. Perception is not reality, Tom. You should know that. Perception is reality. No, I do. That is, is what I know. Reality. No, perception is reality. No, 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 no. Not just because they, that's the way you see it. Does not well, make again, I, I made a bet with a guy. because so Another one of you loons called in and bet me $500 uh, that Ron Paul would uh, would win at anything, would, would win any primary. And here I'm looking at a $500 check the guy had to send to me, which I sent on to the American Red Cross. Now, I'm not debating. I'm not debating. I have it right here. For president. I don't think he's going to win either. However, he has my support. And I would like I said, like, like every conspiracy theorist and crackpot, you all no, always have to have a candidate. And in this case, crackpot? he's what, yours. What, 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 what stance on any? Oh, when you start with that council on foreign relations, I feel like I'm listening to AM talk radio already. Police. His behemoth. His oh, behemoth, why is this the Neil crackpot. Bort show? What is this? Oh my gosh! I can't believe you're following the sheep, Tom. Oh, stop it. You know what? Uh, you know, I'm a broadcaster. The Bilderberg group is fake, too. The Bilderbergers and the tri uh, how about the Trilateral Commission. Get them in there. Oh, yeah, and the, and the, and the Trilateral the Commission. Thing. That's right. Same thing. Right. And it's the all the same. Thing. And the, the, and the thing Rockefellers. Thing. Yes, and Warren Buffett is in on this. Oh, Jesus. Come on, Tom. you got to admit the possibilities. How are you going to – how can you say oh, it's not a possibility? Stop well, you, it. You, you, you it. yourself say you don't deal in – Where's the beef? And you don't generalize. Where so is the goddamn beef? beef? Where is the this beef? Is what you're doing. You're, you're just you're another you crackpot, crank talk show host, a talk show uh, caller calling up, like the like the cranks and crackpot talk show hosts. Uh, who, are you a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, Tom? Uh, well, you know what? I think I ought to join. I'm not, but I, I think well, I, if people yeah, like you are opposed, I'm going to join. Oh. I'll, I'll see you at the revolution, Tom. Blow I'm me up. Very good. I'll see you there. I'm not blowing you up. Jesus Christ. Go back to AM radio where you came from, please. I'm sure the Dennis Prager show is on right about now. You go back there. Stay there. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number. It's Steve on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey Tom, how you doing? Doing okay. I was just wondering uh, what you thought of the Super Bowl and who you thought was going to win this year. Um. Well, I mean, how can you argue against the Patriots at this point? They won every game this season. They're a good team. There's no arguing that. Don't tell me you're from New York. You're from New York, right? I'm not from New York. No. Really? No. I like New York, though. I'm a giant fan. And uh, what is that based on? I just grew up liking them. I don't know. Mm. It kind of stuck with me when I was a kid. I see. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, the Giants uh, beat a lot of surprising teams, no doubt about that. Uh, they they surprised a lot of people, but uh, the Patriots are that good. Yeah, I think the Patriots, they got a great team. Everyone's saying they're going to make history, but uh, the same thing happened a couple of years back. I remember the Patriots were 14-point underdogs against the Rams, and they really shocked the world, and that was kind of the start of their franchise. Oh, but, the, but the Rams and the Patriots that year had not won every game all season. No, yeah, correct, correct. But they're due for a loss. Well, they're due for a loss. But that could happen next season or the season after. Who, who who will you be rooting for that time? Will you be rooting for New York or will you be rooting for the Patriots? Uh, you, well, you, you know, I, for me, it's a challenge. Who do I hate more, New England or New York? Like the place. Let's start with the places. Forget the teams. <laughs> I know you hate do New I, York. Do I hate people from New York more than people from New England? New England, a bunch of old, crotchety, drunken cranks <laughs> uh, who do nothing but beat the crap out of each other and get drunk till they puke. And have fist fights on the street, uh, or do I hate the uh, nasty uh, grease balls from New York? Uh, you know the guys who ride the D train and think it's the center of the universe. Who do I hate more? I, I don't know. I really don't know who I hate more. And I think if I had to come right down to it, um, I, I would have to say that as much as I hate New York, I hate New England even more. 
There you go. Uh, so uh, be, I'll be watching the game with my brother, who's a Giants fan. So I will probably root for the Giants. But the reality is I don't live in either of these places, and I don't really care about either one of these teams. And in reality, L.A. doesn't have a team, so it's very hard for me to get very excited about any football team. Yeah, yeah. And and frankly, uh, the team I've uh, been enjoying watching the most uh, has been the Cowboys. And uh, uh, frankly, I, I was rooting for the Cowboys this season. Well, my condolences to you there, Tom. Well, I understand, but uh, believe me, they're going to be a factor for a while. That's a good team, and they're going to be a good team for a long time. They're an upcoming team, yeah. Right. But, uh, thanks for taking the call, Tom. Um, I'm here to help. The only problem for the Giants with the Super Bowl is that their fans won't be able to cluster around the uh, around the uh, staircase and uh, shop for women to take their tops off. They won't be able to do that in Arizona. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Uh, this is uh, Rudy on the Tom Like His Show. Hello, Rudy. Hey, how's it going, man? Is it Tom. Oh, did you want to talk to Tom? Yeah, hey, wait, what's up? Hey, hey, uh, Tom, hey, I had a couple of questions about mutual funds. Yeah, what do you want to know? Yeah, you know, you got me inspired about, um, you know, to try to invest money in the market and all that. And, um, you know, I kind of got some, I got some funds, but, uh, I was wondering if it's safe to uh, invest in defense funds. Is it okay. safe? I, yeah. my opinion, and remember, I'm not a registered uh, uh, broker. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's always, I, I'm not know. with the. Uh, you know, I don't have the SEC uh, the license or any of that stuff. But I'm just the opinion of a self-made multimillionaire. And what I will tell you is that I think if you're about to have a Democratic president who uh, proposes to get yeah, us out yeah. of Iraq, defense stocks would not be a good place to invest right now. Yeah. Well, I know. Just you know, I got I got two thirds of my portfolio on an international. Uh, funds and um, I was wondering if that's is that's okay. You know, uh, it might be a little too much. Yeah. I'm well, a, um, and, and which funds are you in? What countries? Where are you going? Uh, can, Canadian, um, European, and Asian. Um, uh, I just from learning from you and you know you got me you got me into like reading into like Money Magazine and all that stuff. And that's good. It's kind of like a, it's like a bit, it's like never ending um, learning stuff. You know, and I was just a. Uh, you know, I got I learned about this Fidelity Defense Fund. That's kind of interesting. You know, kind of gets into like all the uh, you know. Yeah, I, I I've invested in that fund in the past. I was in it right after nine eleven, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I'm thinking of getting out, but you don't think that one's cool, huh? You know, the next, next president might. Well, up. isn't that what we keep hearing? That uh, yeah. Well, first of all, do you believe? Well, it depends on who you believe is going to win the election: Republican or well, Democrat. Well, I think personally, whoever's president, I think regardless of who it is, I think we're going to still be there no matter what, you know? I mean... Yeah, yeah, but we're not. But the point is we're not going to be elevating or escalating what's already there. Oh, who knows? <laughs> so, well, I, I believe that if a Democrat wins, they're, they're not going to escalate the war. Yeah, yeah, but we're going to have our bases there, I mean, no matter what. Yeah, but, but again, the, the money was made when they're building the tanks, yeah, yeah. okay? If they're not absolutely escalating the war, they've got the equipment there. They're not building any more equipment. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Cool. So, you get, uh, I mean, aside from mutual funds, I mean, what else would you recommend? I mean, there's so many things out there like bonds and you know and all that stuff. I'm, I'm still kind of learning and all. So. Well, I, 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 bonds should be a part of your portfolio through a mutual fund. Uh, but uh, at your age, it shouldn't be a lot of bonds, maybe 25%, 20%, something like that. And uh, there are many good bond mutual funds out there. Yeah. You, you can find them easily at Money Magazine and other places. But, uh, yeah. you know, Vanguard has some good funds. Loomis Sales has some good funds. Nice, nice. And as I told you, the best place to find out about these is a website called Morningstar.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean you're, like, you're one of the guys that really got me into this, man. And um, I'm, I'm glad, you know, because um, it's like it, it's, it's a good thing to do, you know. You know it's like... So, uh, yeah, that's about it, man. Uh, appreciate it, man. Well, good luck to you. Thanks a lot for the call. All right, coming up next, we'll be joined by Skylar Stone. Stay right there. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I just started listening to you yesterday, man. What is the most important thing that you've learned here so far? That I ain't got to take no girl out to dinner to get some. It's the Tom Likas Show.
It's the Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5800 Tom. Thank you for tuning in. Skyler Stone returns. How's it going? Uh, it's going good, man. You know, I have a reality show I want to pitch to you. I want to follow around people after you go off on them and they hang up. I want to see what happens to them. Like, I want to see if, like, if their life changes. Like, I just want to, like, find out if they start a riot, if they get in a car accident, because... I don't know, man. You've sent some people off the phone so pissed before. Well, I think people have jumped off buildings or bridges. I, I do. <laughs> I'm telling you, you've got a whole A and E. This is like an intervention type show, like A and E's intervention. I could see it, like <laughs> we call it um, Father's Calls. <laughs> I thought about you the other day. I was at Father's Office, and I uh, that's why I called you, Gary, to, to get on the show. So, Father's Office. How's Sang Yoon doing over there? Is that the is that the Burger Man there? That's the Burger Man. It's Father's Office, greatest hamburger in Los Angeles. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. Absolutely. Good beers, good place. Yes. Good place to hang. Like it. I saw your face. I was watching, uh, I watched For Your Consideration again. Oh. And uh, saw you there. I saw, saw me making fun of your profession, actually. That's exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I'm making fun of you, making fun of, like, you know, uh, DJs in, say, Peoria, you know, morning show, you know, yeah. rock show guys. So uh, I know. No, it was fun. No, it was fun. I, by the way, that was a great movie. I, and it didn't. It, it, what was funny about it was I got. I mean, it was an honor to get a call and say uh, I got the call. They were like, Christopher Guest saw an episode of Con. I'm like, all right, well, I'm glad someone saw it. So, you know, and then he, he was like, you know, they want, he wants to put you in his movie. So I went and sat down with him, and it wasn't even an audition. It was literally just like 40 minutes of him like messing with me to see if I can put up with. It. Like he, he literally, it was like an improv meeting. Like he literally just kind of like said the weirdest things in the world, and like he just wanted to see how I'd respond. And I just kind of played the improv, like you know catch game with him and he just he's like all right you're in i'm like sweet i didn't wow. even have to i didn't even have to read it. that was kind of cool so was there a script uh there's not a script you know the way he works is um like he just has like a like an 18 page outline and most scripts are like you know for a comedy are like 90 pages so it's literally like my scene said um parker poses Par- parker posey's uh character goes to radio station these guys are slobs and they make fun of her and talk about her breasts and that's it you know and so like literally we would do like you know like six seven takes and each one is like 15 minutes long and then I saw the movie, and my scene was 25 seconds long. That's how they do it. <laughs> That's how they work it down. Absolutely. So, but it was fun. Uh, it looked like it was fun to do. All those movies look like they're fun to do. Uh, uh, Christopher Guest had uh, Best in Show, which I just watched again. That's the one I would like to do the most. Like, like, like the dog, the dog yeah. one. That's the best one he ever did, I think. Waiting for Guffman was a good one, too. Yep. Um, well, good movies all, and fun. And uh, it's different from doing stand-up, I have to imagine. Uh, it's, it's totally it because, you know, with stand-up, like, you know, uh, something I've learned from a lot of the comics is, you know, like you go up there with a set and you do improv with the audience a little bit. But, you know, especially in L.A., you always have someone important in the audience. So you don't want to go too far off. You want to give them your your best set, you know. But like coming to that uh, sort of a set, it was like you could not if you, if they could smell it off of you. Those guys have been doing it so long. Eugene Levy, Catherine O'Hara, all those people like, you know, if you had too many like lines that you could tell you came up with on the way there while you're drinking your coffee. They would just look at you like, eh, that's not improv. You, you 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 thought of that in the shower today, you know. So like you really had to bring your A plus game in front of them. It was it was crazy. What time of day did you film that? I'm curious about all the how they do this stuff. It's tough, man, because like, I can't tell you. Like I've never understood. Although I hear I hear Judd Apatow starts his sets late, and I think that's why his comedies are so good. I don't know if that's true, and if he's listening, I, I have no idea. But like someone told me, he does not do like six, seven a.m. call times. We were up every day five, six, seven a.m. You know, like filming and stuff. I mean, it's one thing to have a script. I can't imagine being funny on an improv basis at the crack of dawn. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, it, it was very. I mean, when I got there, I just you, you just kind of tell yourself, all right, you have to, if you want to be in another one of these, you have to do it, you know. It's like, I guess it's like being thrown into anything, you know. You have no idea what you're doing, but it's like, all right, I'm going to try this. So, yeah. It was fun. So, uh, you also made a crank call to the governor, I hear? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got a phone call um, about a year ago right now from Fox, and they were like, could you do the network version of Jackass? And I'm like, yeah, I think so. I think we could come up with that. And I came up with a show called Skyler's Revolution. And you'll like this. It was actually a show uh, that you know kind of takes a lot of your teachings, in fact. And it was like basically a show where you find people that hate their lives, a la Office Space, and basically you know show up to their house, unbeknownst to them, like their friends usually call in and say, "Hey, we got this guy. He's a big loser, and he's you know he doesn't make any smart you know decisions with women or career or anything. We want you to. We want him to be on your show. So we would show up to people's houses and literally like show up and have 
hazmat suits, and we'd have, like, fire trucks and ambulances, and we would literally, like, freak this guy out that there was a big gas leak in his apartment, and he was about to die, and these people would freak out. Like, they'd start crying, and we had hidden cameras, and then the next thing you know, like, we would, like, calm them down, we'd tell them this was all a big joke, and they're on a show called Skyler's Revolution, and then they would usually freak out. There's, like, this five-minute period where you have to, like, really, like, like they might throw something, you know what I mean, because they thought they were just about to die, and then we would throw them in an RV with us and take them, like, off to Vegas and, like, like take them on this, like, life-altering adventure where we would, like, just make them do crazy things. And he said that he just didn't have a pair of cojones. Like, he had a hard time standing up to women, standing up to friends, bosses. And we're like, all right, well, we're going to uh, we're gonna have you call the governor right now. And he's like, what do you mean call the – I'm like, no, I mean the governor of California, Governor Schwarzenegger. So we called him up, and he had to act like he was Michael Douglas's assistant. And I can do Michael Douglas's voice pretty well. And so what happened was he basically said, you know, Governor Schwarzenegger, Michael Douglas wants to talk to you. And he was, like, shaking, like, literally holding this, like, Blackberry, just, like, just about to drop it. And, like, I came on the phone, and I'm like, hey, Arnold, it's Mike. Listen, me and my wife want to have you over for dinner. And I literally did, like, this five-minute call where, like, I made dinner plans with Governor Schwarzenegger. <laughs> it's really fun. If you go on YouTube and type in Skylar Stone, uh, it's, uh, it'll come up. And it says, Skylar pranks Governor Schwarzenegger. So. Now, how did it wrap up? Well, what happened was, you know, at the end, you know, Arnold's like, oh, all right, Michael, tell you what, I'll call you. I can't do Arnold, but I'm just, just whatever. He's like, I'll call you back and we'll make dinner plans, you know. And I'm like, absolutely. Hey, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Uh, just uh, also wanted to know, you know, is there anything I could maybe run for and send it? And like he literally was like, he was like, absolutely. I'd love to sit down and talk to you about like he got excited that a fellow A-lister, you know, like an, an 80s icon was thinking about jumping into politics. So he literally, I mean, it was really funny. So, you know, if you go to YouTube, it's a really funny phone call. Oh, wow. And uh, here you are, Hollywood Improv, next week? Yeah, I got a big show. I really want to get a bunch of people to go. Um, if you email me at Skyler at SkylarStone.com, I'll get you free tickets. Um, it's uh, this Thursday night at the Hollywood Improv on Melrose. It's uh, myself, um, uh, Harlan Williams, you know, from Half Baked and, yeah. um, you know, all those movies, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, Nick Thune. Uh, do you guys know Nick Thune? No. Really good comic. He's, he's, he's kind of like a Stephen Wright type guy or Zach Galifianakis, just really like. Off the beat, you know, off the beaten path, and really alternative. And we also have uh, Andy Melnakis from the Andy Melnakis show. So it's gonna be good. Sounds like a lot of fun. This Thursday at 10 p.m. Totally cool. Yeah. So what else is going on with you? Uh, just you know, I'm just trying to um, you know, I, I did my uh, first lead role in a film, and I'm trying to see what happens with that. You know, what I mean, I, you hear the horror stories of you know, oh my gosh, you know, if someone did like six films before the first one got released, and you know, we're, we're hoping this gets released in August. Uh, we got a, a film I did with Danny DeVito. It's my first lead, and it's called uh, No Place Like Home. And uh, I just saw it the other day, and I'm very, very proud. It's very, very funny. Did you set out to be an actor? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's all I've ever wanted to do. You know, I, I don't really consider myself a comic. I, I consider my, you know, because I don't get up every night. Like a lot of these guys that come in here, Joe Rogan and all these guys, you know, they get up, you know, six, seven spots a night, you know. And I just, I don't do that, you know, I, I and I wish I could. I just, I, I guess I just don't have enough passion to... You know, could you do six radio shows in one day? Uh, yes. You could? Yes, I could. Oh, you love radio, right? No, no, literally, uh, I could sit and talk into the microphone 24-7. Really? Like, this is really just a slice of my life. <laughs> I go home, I'm talking to the people on the phone, and it's like I'm here. It's the same thing. <laughs> well, no, I, I definitely know it's the same thing, because, you know, you're the same guy off the air. But, I, I, like, with me, it's like... I, I don't um, with stand up. You know, it's it's just you literally have to love it. Like the way that like someone like Dane Cook loves it to get up like you know six seven times a night. And I just don't I don't have that. I, I called some. Uh, this is absolutely true. People are going to think I'm making this up, but it's, it's radio version of what you're doing. I I I called a friend today uh, in the radio business and told him I was the grease man. <laughs> and he didn't know who he was talking to, and I continued being the grease man. <laughs> And it took, uh, you know, that that's what I do. I just sit at home and make uh, crank calls to my friends is what I do. <laughs> I mean, I, acting is literally like, you know, since I was a kid, uh, I think Ghostbusters, Caddyshack, films like that made me want to, like, you know, come out here and do that sort of thing. So yeah, I've been chasing that ever since I got here. So Look at that. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back with Skylar Stone. He's appearing at the Hollywood Improv next Thursday, February 7th. If you'd like to make a reservation to see him, if you, you, you call this number, you'll be in. It's 323 651 2583. He's offered free tickets to you, though, if you send him an email, Skylar at SkylarStone.com. Yes, yes. That's all you got to do. Yeah. Right, we'll come back with Skylar Stone. Your telephone calls are coming up. Tom, 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 Tom. Like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. If I'm blessed enough to meet my soulmate, why would I go and blow it with marriage? It's the Tom Likes Show.
from Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Thank you for tuning in. Here we are with Skylar Stone. Your telephone calls here one 800 5 800 talk one 800 5 Take some calls here. I don't know what these people are calling about, but we're going to find out here. Hey, Joe, you're on the Tom Likas Show. I'm here with Skylar Stone. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, Skyler. Yeah. It's Morgzy. Joey Morganella. What's going on, brother? This is one of the cast members from Con. What's going on, dude? How much? Hey, Tom, I just want to call up and say uh, first time, long time. Thank you so much. I remember from the uh, the good old days when you were on in Boston. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My 15 years ago. About it. Wow. Yeah, my old man told me all about it. I just wanted to say... <laughs> so, I so you don't remember. <laughs> you oh, don't yeah. remember someone else remembered it for you. Okay. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I uh, just wanted to say you're talking about the Patriots and the Giants. Uh, I'm from a little town called Weymouth, Massachusetts. Oh, you, really... don't, you don't say it. We couldn't tell by the voice at all. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, when they're from the East Coast, they always get that in within the first minute. Yeah. Oh, they always got that in. They have to tell us where they're from. I like we'll be impressed. <laughs> That's how Boston people. Let me but, just tell you, my my hometown is also the hometown of uh, George Jung from the movie Blow. <laughs> That's something again. Be, Mike will be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I thought he might be impressed. I don't know. <laughs> now, let's, let's not kid ourselves about the situation, which the Pats are really going to kick butt on Sunday. Like, let's not kid ourselves about this. Yeah, but are, you, are you saying that because it's true, or are you saying that because you're from New England? Well, you know, you know, both. I mean, you know, obviously I'm a little skewed, but come on, man. Look, look, look at these guys. And the Giants, really? Come on, man. Well, the Giants are the NFC champions, and the Giants shocked a lot of people. They did They did shock a lot of people, and they're hot. But, you know, you give Belichick two weeks to prep for a team, forget about it, man. Yeah, he gets the telescopes out and the binoculars. <laughs> He's got all his, uh, all his spyware out, yeah. Two weeks to prep. He's had plenty of time to uh, go through the offices of the other team. Oh, yeah. like, I'm stoked about the Super Bowl. Like, oh, I, yeah. I think the Super Bowl is going to be a good game, and I also heard a rumor that the Indiana Jones 4 trailer is going to be on it, so I'm pretty stoked about that. But oh, I think nice. I think the uh, Super Bowl would be even better if uh, Joey Morganella was the, the, the play-by-play announcer. Just listen to his voice. Like It's the perfect voice. I heard they're also going to have the... Uh... The commercial for uh, Ghostbusters 4, that's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. Uh, that's weird because there wasn't a third one, so <laughs> your joke just completely failed on semantics alone. <laughs> Forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> well, thank hey, you thank you so hey, much Tom, for checking could, in with us. Tom, could you, uh, could you take me out Kobe style? Yes, of course I can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, there I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. The Tom Likas Show. Skylar Stone here in the studio. Let's say hello here to uh, oh my Tim on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, are you talking to me? <laughs> Who is this, Travis Bickle? <laughs> hey, Skylar, how you guys doing, man? Pretty good. Geez, you know, I was just calling Tom. Yeah, Scott is hilarious. This is great. I'm really glad he's on there. Man, I got a big issue problem. I got uh, my wife of 25 years hung out with a friend of hers that got a breast lift, and now all of a sudden she's obsessed. She wants to get a, a boob job, and I, I can't. You know, a husband paying for a wife's boobs, that's just like a ticket out or something, isn't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I, that's I, what I think. I mean, hit me up, like us 101, man. Tell me where I'm at with it. Hey, when they ask for a boob job, that's because they want attention from other guys. She's got your attention. <laughs> that's right. Or do, but or does she, though? How's the relationship going? Uh, you know, it has its ups and downs. But, no, she's great. Our sex life is great. So It's not because of her boobs, right? <laughs> no. No. You know, it's, it's about who they're attached to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you accept but- her the way she is, right? If I totally you married her with those boobs, right? <laughs> I married her. That's exactly right. And man, oh man, I'm, I'm just I'm thinking about my Likas 101 training, and I'm thinking this is wrong. You gotta this tell it. Let you know what? Let the guy who's gonna feel those boobs pay for them. No kidding. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Because I, I pretty much guarantee you it won't be you. 
Who, who, there we go. Who was she hanging out with? You're saying it was a friend that – so a friend just had a boob lift, and now, now who was this? I, it was just this other mom of, you know, one of our, our daughter's friends, and they took her in the bathroom and says, look at my new boobs. And so she came out, and she's just, like, mesmerized now. She says, God, they look beautiful. I really want some. It's like it's, – it's as if you're buying a new car or something. It's like, oh, man, stop it. I can bear women in cars all the time. <laughs> I mean, you know what the deal is. Uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what time I ran into uh, uh, a Natalia, this Russian girl, that I think she was kind of dating you for a while. Is this like some tall, amazing-looking Russian girl? <laughs> Where did this come up all of a sudden? Whoa. I'm shifting gears, dude. I'm sorry to throw that. Yeah, but with no great segue. You're just like, <laughs> so yeah, my wife wants boobs. You know, this is this tall Russian girl that... Uh... <laughs> Why, are you dating her now? Is that the deal? No, 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 no. I was oh. just at a party a while back. And, oh, okay. Uh, she, she was kind of intriguing, and I, and I don't know. Some, you, you came up in conversation. Oh, look at that. Look at that. So you get around some on the off hours. Look, at you're not just on the radio 24-7. <laughs> you actually have a social life. We were just wow. talking about that. He's shocked, yes. <laughs> He's shocked that I have a life outside the studio. <laughs> Listen, okay, thanks so much for having me on, man. You guys rock on. I'll see you later. All right, Tim. <laughs> 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. I'm sure to tell you now is uh, probably mortified. <laughs> Let's say hello here to uh, Sergio on the Tom Likas show. We're here with Skylar Stone. Hello. Uh, Tommy, I've been waiting for an hour and a half on the phone. I finally got to talk to you, my hero. <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you. I've been listening to you for 12 years, buddy. Really? Yeah. Anyway, uh, we miss you in the Bay Area. I'm a truck driver, and I'm driving through Portland, Oregon. Yep, home of the other white meat. Home of the other white meat, sir. <laughs> hey, check this out, Tommy. Uh, about racism, you know how you were saying about Obama. Um, you got to give it to the girl. She had a good argument. I'm surprised for, you know, being a chick. But anyway, uh, I, don't, I don't think if he wins in the primaries, I don't think he, he, he will get it. Like, I don't think so, because it, there is a lot of racism, unfortunately. And you got to uh, win the votes from a lot of white people that vote. That's right. Many of them so, listen to Christian talk radio, okay? That tells exactly, you what you need to know. Exactly, exactly. You know, um, like, uh, I'm, I'm Hispanic. Uh, my parents came here in the 50s. I was born and raised here. My kids are born and raised here. They uh I got two of them that don't speak Spanish. And guess what? They're called border jumpers. Oh, my God. They're, they're what? You know. Border they, jumpers. They, 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 I, th I thought Oregon, well, you're in San Francisco area? Yeah. They Isn't that supposed to be like a they, liberal area, like like politically liberal? Yeah. I exactly. My parents live up there. I find that hard to believe. That's weird. Yeah, they come from school sometimes and tell me uh, they've been called border jumpers. And they, you know what? It affects me a lot because uh, where where I grew up, I grew up uh, seeing people like uh, Lou Dobbs type of jackasses. I was just going to uh, mention Lou Dobbs. I hate that bastard. I wish I could see that bastard. We all do. First, I could spit in his face. Well, I think you'd have to go to New York to do that. <laughs> I'll get to see him someday. But anyway, um, you know, I, I honestly, I, I I I must have problems with myself because I have so much hate, so much hatred. Towards uh, white people, man. Unless you can prove really? to me, oh, uh, jeez, <laughs> ow. Well, that's not. Uh, unless, my, that's not. Unless, like I said, unless words. you can prove <laughs> to me that you're cool, I'm going to treat you cool. But oh, unfortunately, I get a pass. On a, on, in the wrong way at first, you know, before I uh, speak any any words to you. But All right. because of, and what about uh, Skyler? Well, can, yeah, can I ask you? I mean, like, like honestly, you say that, but like, you know, if I were to say right now that the same thing about your race, I, I would get in so much like, why, like, why is it that you can say that to me? I just don't understand yeah. that. Yeah, I, you know what? That because I was always put down and be called. I used to work. I used to be called. Work I wasn't days. beat up. I, I didn't have a fifth grade bully. I didn't. I mean, what are you talking? Like, I just I hate it when I hear people. Say, I, it just drives I, me insane. I know. I know. I, but you know, <laughs> you just said it. <laughs> okay, whatever. But, hey, you know, unfortunately... Go to scholarstone.com. Uh, <laughs> change something for, for everybody. What's that? I said, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of racism, and uh, hopefully... Well, there is a lot of racism, and I think that's why Obama would lose running against John McCain. Unfortunately. But, but come on, there's none, there's none in this studio, for God's sake. Did you just take, like, some ecstasy? Because you're, like, taking some, like, you're, like, jumping off on some, some bridges here with these verbal... He's, he's truck driver, probably doing a little math or something. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know no, 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 
may, maybe you're understanding me wrong. Maybe I'm not, I'm not, I'm not explaining myself right. Not, not that any of you guys. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? No, oh, no. yeah, because we're not white. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not putting you guys as an example, but, you know, people like a Lou Dobbs type of person that looks like, you know, that kind of guy. Lou Dobbs, also known as Howard Peel. <laughs> But anyway, Sergio uh, Gatto, you know, I'm I like very that. happy to talk to you, man. I waited an hour and a half to talk to you, and I'm very happy, man. All right, Sergio. I, I miss you in the Bay Area, man. Well, well, we miss being on FM in the Bay Area. We do. What hour, are you going to do? Hour and a half, man. Good luck with that uh, next up, Bill. Oh, baby. Richard on the Tom Likey Show. We're here with Skylar Stone, Hollywood Improv, next Thursday, Feb 7. Hello. Hey, what's up, Dad? How you doing? Doing okay, son. Yeah, Hey, Dad, so I've been having trouble sleeping the last year or so. Yeah. So I went to my doctor, and he prescribed me some Ambien, and I've been taking that for about six months. And after uh, good old Heath had his little situation with Ambien, kind of scared here. Did you so, tell your doctor? No, I haven't been to my doctor yet. I just I've stopped taking the pill, and uh, I don't really want to take it anymore because, you know, I'm kind of scared to end up like my... Hollywood Idol there. Why are you having a sleep uh, issue? What's the problem over there? Yeah, let's yeah. dig a little deeper than the actual pill. Yeah. <laughs> find out where this, what the did genesis the, is. Did the doctor ask you any questions, like why you're having a hard time sleeping? Well, I've always had a hard time sleeping. I'm like, I kind of worry a lot. What and, are you worried uh, about? Like financially, and you know, just. Well, why don't you just, why you know, just get I, a better job or something? Well, that's just it. I did get a better job, but I took a pay cut to get it. A better job meaning one that's more lucrative. Uh, lucrative? No, I just say uh, it's more of a career type of deal. Like my previous job, I, I was at the top pay scale, but I wasn't able to advance at all. That's because you're and in like, the top pay scale. Yeah, and my new job, I took a eleven dollar pay cut. Eleven dollars an hour pay cut. Eleven dollars an hour pay. So cut. how much do you make now? Uh, Fourteen dollars an hour. No wonder you're worried about money. Yeah, exactly. And what do you do for a living that's so fulfilling? I'm an electrician. You're an electrician? Yeah. My God, I, if I could find an electrician who takes fourteen dollars an hour, I'd hire him tomorrow. Yeah, bro, that's just it. I just started, and I already stated that. So I don't understand like what you're trying to get at here. I no, I'm saying that. I've, 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 when I call the electrician, it's uh, eighty bucks for a visit. Yeah. I've never. I, I I just got a house, and I, I we had an electrician the other day. I, if you're fourteen dollars an hour, I'm gonna get your info. Before right. I head out What's of your studio. number? <laughs> yeah, I'm a, What's your MySpace page? I'm gonna leave I'm a comment. Apprentice. I'm an apprentice right now, dude. So you know, I'm not making top dollar. Like, oh, so you might you might burn the house down or something. At this point, you're learning how to do it. Yeah, pretty much, dude. No wonder I, you're stressing. I know as much as you know about electricity, so you probably don't want me working on your house. Oh, I see. All right. Yeah. So you decided that that's what you want to be as an electrician. Yeah. Well, so, what was your job previously? What did you do before that? I was working in a warehouse. It's a warehouse? Okay. Yeah. Making $24 an hour. By the, by the way, did the idea of college ever sneak through your mind at any point in time? Well, I'm actually in school right now. No, no. College. I'm not talking about DeVry. I'm not talking about ITT Tech. I'm not in DeVry, DeVry or oh, what, 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 what school are you attending? I'm, I'm afraid to ask. It is, it's a trade school. But Which one? It's, it's not a official college, dude. It's Closed cover before I'm striking in. school of gun repair? What is it? Yeah, pretty much, dude. So, I mean, I asked a simple question. I'm trying to get at my question here, dude. So, what? Ambien and Heath Ledger. You know, <laughs> trying to dig at me, dude, or what? It's not that I'm trying to dig at you. I'm trying to. I, I, the doctor should try to break this down and find out why you've got a sleep disorder. I mean, you have a sleep disorder because you don't make enough money. You don't make enough money because you haven't really applied yourself no, to do anything lucrative. It's because I took a pay cut to start a career that is going to enable me to make more money. The, the, the point is, you didn't go to college in the first Tom, place. When you started radio, dude, were you making what you're making now? Well, was I don't I... think so, buddy. Buddy no. boy. <laughs> But, but here's I don't think so, dude. Here's the deal. You got to work your way up, dude. You got to build up to the top pace. You got to come up with an act in the electrician business. You got to work at the small electric clubs and work your way up okay, the ladder. So I got I to come up with a gimmick like you so I can be top dollar. Is that it, dude? Maybe you do. My God, a little touchy. Maybe, oh, maybe, maybe like a nude electrician. Yeah, kind of a gimmick. The Tom Likas Show.